In the wake of the supermarket massacre in Buffalo, New Jersey Governor Murphy criticized conservatives who have pushed a conspiracy theory that black people are replacing white people in the U.S. Cue the hurried backpedaling from the right-wing talking heads and politicians who have so freely and openly peddled the garbage replacement conspiracy. I can't bring myself to call it a theory and who can't possibly believe that the words that poisoned our airwaves and rotted our civil dialogue with could actually come home to roost. I think every single one of them knows where they could shove their thoughts and prayers. The governor also pleaded for federal and state lawmakers to pass more gun control laws. Meanwhile, new scrutiny and criticism of social media tonight as powerful fallout begins in the wake of that gun massacre. It wasn't just the live streaming of the murders that the accused killer posted while the carnage happened. It's also the wide open social media sites rife with racism and hatred pushed by white supremacists. How to deal with all this? It seems simple, but it is complicated. Here's Darla Miles. There's no longer a question if social media plays a role in these tragic events. It does it to the point you could almost point to it as an accessory in these events. Two minutes into it is also enough that it gets shared. It's now out there. Two minutes of the Buffalo shooting massacre is out there. In fact, it was forwarded to Eyewitness News multiple times. But we are firm in our decision not to broadcast one single image of it. As a First Amendment scholar, I have to reinforce it. We don't have First Amendment guarantees to social media. Hate that amounts to violence and harming people and taking the lives of people, that's not a question of speech. That's a conduct that we deem to be illegal. It aired live on Twitch, a live streaming platform owned by Amazon that gained popularity with performing artists during the pandemic. In a statement, it says Twitch has a zero tolerance policy against violence and works swiftly to respond. It says we are taking all appropriate action, including monitoring for any accounts rebroadcasting this content. But in light of what happened in Buffalo, it seems like this response is no longer enough. The CEOs of those companies need to be held accountable. You have to go after these uh, the, the, the operators of these sites and put them, uh, they have to be accountable for what they do. And experts say federal regulations can and should be done. So when we come to the question of holding those platforms accountable, that's actually well within the government's rights to say, you have a responsibility to the public and essentially as a company that's providing goods and services to make sure it's accountable and treating people safely. And critics say oversight should be preemptive and proactive, as opposed to scrambling to react after the damage has been done. It's not Facebook, it's not Twitter. It's, 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 it's these smaller sites that people go there for a reason. We have the data science to identify through algorithms, through the data scrub algorithms, to see what's being said on these things and to stop it and to address it. Dar